It's official. YouTube Music has dropped a huge update that's going to help a whole bunch of artists if they use this feature correctly. It says that after about a year of testing, YouTube Music has rolled out a new feature allowing users to search for songs by humming, singing, or playing a tune directly into the app. This is going to be a game changer when it comes to us promoting our songs and trying to get our sound out there. It says the sound search feature is going to be accessible through a waveform icon in the search bar, and it taps into YouTube Music's catalog of over 100 million official songs to find its matches. It says it's available for people with iOS or Android, so whether you got an Android or an iPhone, you good. You could just hum along, find that melody, and you got your song. Anything that's going to help people find music faster, it's a win for us. Like I said, it's going to be a game changer when it comes to marketing our music, promoting our sound, because now it's not just, do they remember the lyrics? Do they remember the, the title of my song? Now it's, do they remember the melody? The melody is super easy to remember. And a lot of people, I've actually met hella people that their favorite songs, they don't even remember the titles of them. So now you ask them to hum a little melody of it, then you as simple as that. All right, YouTube Music got your back. And just in case you was thinking YouTube Music is small time, they're definitely not. It says earlier this year, the app celebrated a milestone of 100 million subscribers. Now, it ain't no Spotify. You know, I just looked it up. It said it was 250 million paid subscribers over there. But 100 million paid subscribers? This isn't YouTube. This is YouTube Music. It says a YouTube Music spokesperson confirmed the rollout to music business worldwide through an email statement. And it says, we hope to bring this to even more YouTube Music users in the future. Okay, so that means that not everybody has. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't subscribe to YouTube Music or whatever. But that means not everybody has this feature yet. And that makes sense. That's what YouTube does on its normal platform. And that's what a lot of different platforms like YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, whatever, they do that first. They put it out in beta, let a, let a few people try it out. And once it has all of the, the kinks and bugs worked out, then that's when it goes out to the masses. So that's what they're saying right now. I don't see why by 2025 this isn't a fully functional feature that's going out to everybody and that everybody is going to start using. And when it does go out to everybody, you know, that's when YouTube is going to go heavy with the marketing, make sure all of their different subscribers and even people that haven't subscribed yet that they're trying to bring over, they're going to make sure that all of them know, that, hey, this is a way. That, that you can search for music now. They say, in addition to this new search feature, YouTube Music is experimenting with AI-generated conversational radio for its premium subscribers in the U.S. And this feature allows users to create custom radio stations by verbally describing their desired music preferences. Now, this, this has me curious because if people are verbally describing it, where... Where are they getting the descriptions of the music from? Meaning, if it's not in the metadata that this is a dark, moody song, whatever, does that mean that they have some sort of AI that is listening to each track and trying to put it in certain buckets? And then if it is in these different buckets, are they comparing it to what they've already listened to in the past? Meaning, like, you can have dark and moody hip-hop and dark and moody, I don't know, screamo. You feel me? Like, those could be two different types of listening experiences. I guess that's when the user could continue to verbally describe it and just say, I want a dark and moody hip-hop radio station. You know what I mean? Whatever the, the case is, all I know is, bro, this shit is mind-blowing. I'm getting hyped as fuck about this shit. Because, like I said, anything that makes it easier, that makes it, ooh, this is new, this is exciting, anything that draws attention to people listening to music, because we're not just fighting with uh, other artists. We're really not fighting with other artists anyway. We should really be gassing each other up, because the more people are listening to music, the more people are listening to music. We don't want this to be something that dies off, especially with all this fucking AI music and all of that shit, man, no. We need people to still love and appreciate naturally made, human-made music, you feel me? And features like this, in my opinion, this is what's going to help continue to bring the attention over to platforms like YouTube Music or Spotify. I don't really give a damn. I know that they 
are obviously in a competition with Spotify and other other streaming platforms, but that has nothing to do with us. In fact, we're just benefiting off of this. This is something that we benefit off of every single time. Basically, I mean, you come out with a new feature, people get excited. What do they do? They listen to more music. Ooh, I want to see if it works for this song. You better hope that you somebody's favorite song because every single one of those 100 million users, I guarantee you, I guarantee you they're going to try it out. They might not try it with their favorite song. It might be the next time they hear one, but bruh. Like no company, it's me, myself, and no one else around. Trust is hard for me, these people just be throwing it around. If you show love to me, I'm paranoid, I gotta shut it down. Fail love, fail love shit. Fail love, fail love shit. Stop playing with me. No ties, I cut all my strings. On God, they always prove me right. I wish I was wrong about these, these, these things. Seen this movie, seen for you might, you might be missing out on some streams if you're not making sure your melodies are getting into people's heads. If people can search this based on melodies, based on just humming, that means you can start putting this into your content. You can start making music that has a melody that is easy to hum along to, that's easy to just, even if you don't know the words, you just kind of get lost in it. And you know what I'm talking about. If you're not there as far as being able to write that yet, that's cool. Just continue to practice and practice and practice. That shit's going to be natural. But if you're there, man, you better use this. I know lyrics, they matter. They definitely do. We writing, or a lot of us at least, we're writing from right here. You feel me? We're writing from our heart. We're writing from our soul. All that sappy shit. But these melodies, it's about to be a game changer, man. I'm telling you. Now, when I say that Spotify and YouTube music, when I say that they're they're definitely racing against each other, it's some sort of competition. It says they really got YouTube's attention when back in March, they launched full-length music videos in beta for its premium users across 11 markets. And this race is just going to continue to intensify. You bring a video over to Spotify, well, let me bring over some music features over to YouTube. This... Like I said, it's going to be a beneficial race to every single artist. We could just sit on the sidelines and continue to benefit as these companies race and race and race and bring out more and more features. Because at the end of the day, what they're all trying to do is capture attention. They're not just competing with each other. They're competing with Netflix. They're competing with Amazon Prime, HBO, whatever. They're competing with real life interactions. They're competing with the different apps and games on your phone. They don't give a damn what it is. Whatever has your attention, whatever has the people's attention, that's what they're competing with. So it's just like, I mean, I'm going to speak for my town. I'm assuming your town is the same because I've been to a lot of different cities and people are people regardless, especially the smaller the town. It's even, it's even worse. But no matter what town you're in, when you have a new restaurant, when you have a new club, a new whatever the fuck, if people start going to it, they're like, oh, this is new. People just, they gravitate towards it. Once people start gravitating towards it, a little line starts to appear. Some talk starts to happen. Whew, that's when the buzz really starts. That's when people really start to shift over to something just because it's new, just because it's being talked about, just because it's what's trending right now. Like I said, this is our moment to capitalize on it. And this moment, it just, it feels like one of those, like, Groundhog Day. It just keeps coming and coming and coming, you feel me? Like, we just keep having these moments. I feel like we just got TikTok. And then Instagram was like, hold up, we got Reels. And then they brought it to Facebook. And then, you know what I'm saying? You, you got LinkedIn with fucking videos and YouTube shorts. And they got all of these algorithms. And they got the TikTokification of every single social media platform where everybody just gets what they want. They don't really give a fuck who you're following. They just know what you like. That moment just continues to happen. Because then we started getting more tools with Spotify, like DJ, and now YouTube with, with this AI thing where you could just hum along and get your new song, whatever the fuck they got going on over there. Like I said, we just the bystanders. We just gonna sit here on the side and continue to benefit. <laughs>